Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Thanks for joining me. You guys ask and I'm going to deliver. I've had so many requests for a mini laundry room, like house sign. So that's what we're going to do here. So I'm actually going to be using some cutting boards from the Dollar Tree, this bunny box sign, and some dollhouse furniture. I'm going to be doing two. So stay tuned for the second part because there's going to be another one of these little uh, laundry room signs. So we're going to have so much fun. <laughs> So I was racking my brain thinking what kind of scenes I want in here for a laundry room. My laundry room is also our half bath and it's in beige with some accent teal. So I thought that's where I would go with this. Now of course you do it for you. You make it your own. You do your own color scheme. These are just some suggestions. Now, I always show you what not to do. Don't even bother painting this. <laughs> There's really no reason to. I don't know why I did. But you do want to paint this. I painted the sides, the outside, and I painted a little bit on the inside. I also took some white acrylic paint and I painted the dollhouse dresser. Now, we are going to be covering um, the box. We're going to also be covering the cutting board. So don't worry too much, just kind of go around. I went into my stash of fabric I've already used and I'm just making, like mimicking little washcloths. So I found some really cute black polka dot. I found some teal. Walmart has these great like little sample fabrics. It actually has quite a bit of fabric. So I'm using one of those and I'm just using a glue stick and folding it. Like I said, I want to mimic like little washcloths for part of this project. What's so neat and so difficult at the same time about these little mini shadow box signs is a lot of times I get ideas as I'm crafting. So if you see me jump around in these videos, that's why, because I thought of a new idea. <laughs> and you will too when you're making this your own. I had some floral wire. Unfortunately, it was in red, but actually that became a blessing that I twisted and turned. And yes, I will admit, I actually swore at it a little bit because <laughs> it just wasn't, I wanted to make a hanger. And yeah, it wasn't cooperating. It, the end result looks like a hanger or yes, it does. It looks like a hanger. We'll go with that. <laughs> but it took some maneuvering, just twisting it and making it the right size. Um, the only floral wire I had was the red, but that was a happy accident because it actually added some contrast to the piece. So that's my version of a hanger. I had some of this distressing ink. Um, usually it's used on paper, but I, I just wanted hints, kind of like if you used any Sloan Dark Wax, so I, I thought I would try this instead of using paint like I normally do. Um, when I use paint, I get a little heavy handed where this I could just add it, you know, a little distressing to it. And then I went into my magical wallpaper book, which is so much fun for me. <laughs> so many things to choose from. I chose the two patterns that I wanted for each box. And now you just see me taking the box and tracing the outside of it and cutting this pattern out. And then I cut my other patterns out. I have a different pattern for the cutting board than I do for the shadow boxes, but they both coincide with each other and look super vintage and super cute together. So with the cutting board, unfortunately, I couldn't go long ways like I wanted to. I had to go kitty corner which was fine. And I traced around the cutting board and I cut that pattern out as well. I would have preferred to have the wallpaper going, you know, long, not diagonal, but that would have meant I would have had to cut two pieces and kind of splice them together. And I just wasn't really comfortable with my ability to do that and make it look like one cohesive piece. If you can do that, go for it. I really didn't mind it being on a slant. <laughs> so I have my paper cut out. I'm just going to use that glue stick and I'm going to attach it. If you want to use hot glue, you could. You're probably going to get a little bubbles and bumps. I didn't know how Mod Podge would work on plastic. Um, 
Let me know in the comments if it would. I could have used that. I didn't really want wrinkles and I'm having so much success with these little glue sticks and not getting wrinkles. I opted for that. I did come in with my hot glue gun. I put just a couple dollops in the corners just for that permanent hold so that I the rest of it would stick. And I also put like a very thin layer in the middle. And then I just smushed it all down <laughs> using my hands to make sure there weren't any bubbles, using my fingers to kind of go in the crease of the cutting board. And then I used some sandpaper and just rolled it and went in that hole. I also sanded all of the edges. I feel like I'm talking without breathing. <laughs> I just keep going. Anyway, going back to the project, I also used the glue stick on the inside of the shadow box. And I put some more little hot glue in the corners and I put that wallpaper inside the shadow box. This wallpaper just warms my heart. It reminds me of something that my grandmother would have had. You all know I love making projects that bring me back in time. This is one of them. So the dollhouse I didn't have. I don't know about you guys, but I can't find those house shadow boxes at my Dollar Tree. They seem to only get a few in stock and they're gone right away. So these signs that they pretty much sell for every season will work. You just don't have the peak and it doesn't look, you know, look like a house. Now, the downside is the dollhouse furniture fits inside the house shadow boxes flush, but not in these. So the legs do come out a little bit. Not enough to have it bother me, but I wanted to just point that out, that if you're using the furniture in these boxes, it does kind of stick out just a little. Now those washcloths that we made, I'm just going to start putting my shadow box together. I'm going to trim them down and I'm going to put them together and put them on top of that dresser, kind of like I just folded washcloths and have them sitting out to put away. That's what's fun about these. That's why I think I'm having so much fun making these is you're kind of mimicking everyday life. You're, you're mimicking your home. You're mimicking your rooms, you know. You, have, you get to have so much fun decorating these and thinking outside the box and looking in your craft stash. Like right now, I found this beautiful white ribbon, and I thought that would make the cutest little table runner for this um, dresser. So I'm using my glue stick, and I'm just cutting a piece of that ribbon and putting it on there. And how cute is that? It's delicate, and it goes perfect with the vintage look. Then I'm taking those mimicked <laughs> um, washcloths, went blank, and hot gluing them on top of each other, like I said, to make it look like I just folded some washcloths. It's so cute. Then I had the idea that this needed a laundry basket. So we're going to do that next. Oh, I got ahead of myself. I always do that. First, I went in my stash and I found these little bitty clothespins and I thought that would be so cute on the hanger that I made. So I just attached the clothespins to hang from the hanger and then used hot glue to put the hanger on the wall and the clothespins. So here's where I thought we need a laundry basket. So I went in my little bottle of lids that I've saved and this is actually a toothpaste lid. I took some white rope and just started using hot glue and going all the way around. I've shown this so many times. I know you guys are, <laughs> you know how to do this. I, you're probably sick of seeing it. <laughs> but it makes a cute little woven basket. I also cut two little tiny pieces off and hot glued those to the sides to make the handles of the laundry basket. That little laundry basket is so cute and that's just what this little scene needed. 
and then I came in and I hot glued the hanger to the wall and I put just a little dab of hot glue under each clothespin so that they would hang exactly where I wanted them to hang on the project. I thought the laundry basket needed something on the inside of the basket and that's where I came in with that black polka dot. I think that adds contrast. And I also came in with a little bit of that ribbon that I used to make the runner for the dresser. And I put just a little bit of ribbon inside that basket as well, sticking out so it looks like some laundry was inside the basket. And then of course the, um, Laundry was folded next to the basket as well. And how cute is that little laundry room scene? I used some hot glue, quite a bit of it actually. <laughs> I put it on the back of my sign and I hot glued it to the cutting board. To finish this look off, I thought that adding some more of that white rope around the whole of the cutting board would really make it look clean and crisp. So I cut off a piece of that white rope and I just put some hot glue around that circle and I put the rope around that just to give it a nice clean look. Then I also came in with some more of that beautiful ribbon and I just folded it in half and I, I hot glued it to the, um, I'm not, I'm going blank right now. I don't, can't see. If I hot, I think I hot glued it underneath the rope. I might have hot glued it to the rope. But this lace ribbon had these beautiful lace flowers. So I just cut off one of the little flowers and I hot glued that on top of it. Um, so you wouldn't see where it was folded and it would all go together. And to finish it off, I took some lace and measured for the top of the box cut it to size and I hot glued some lace to the top of the shadow box as well. There it is. Vintage, super dainty, so stinking cute. <laughs> Now we're going to do DIY number two, which is the same steps as DIY number one. I'm using the same materials as far as the cutting board in the box, but we're going to make this a totally different scene. So I had these teal stones and I have my mini bottles from Dollar Tree that you've seen me use. And I want to mimic um, laundry soap and fabric softener. So I thought these teal stones would be cute since they're colorful to mimic the laundry detergent. And then I just use some cotton ball and put it in the little bitty bottle to mimic fabric softener. So cute. I'm just obsessed with these little bottles. I love filling them. I had one of these home calendars from Dollar Tree and I thought that that would make a great washer and dryer. So I took that acrylic paint and I painted over the numbers and I painted over the months that were on these. Two of them I'm going to use for a um, shelf and the other one I'm going to cut in half to make my washer and dryer. Um, I didn't have anything on hand and I really wanted to make a washer and dryer, but well, I'll get back to that. I did the same step in number one and I just traced around my paper and I traced around the cutting board and did the same exact thing. I used my glue stick to attach both of the wallpapers to each piece.
Okay, so now we're gonna get back to that washer and dryer. Originally, my idea was to do a stackable and they were gonna be on top of each other with a little piece in between. That just still wasn't tall enough. So I really wanted to add these. You guys make this your own or give me suggestions of what I could have done better here, but they needed to be higher. When I put them on the piece, they were just too small and it just didn't look right. So I went in my stash, I grabbed some Django blocks, I hot glued them down to the sign and then I used that acrylic paint to paint them white. Now I took, I told you one of those pieces that had the months on it and I cut it down to fit the size of this square and that's going to be like the top part where your knobs are on the washer and dryer. And I hot glued all of these down and I painted those Jenga blocks. Um, this gave it height and a lot of, of the like fancy washer and dryers <laughs> are on like drying bins or I don't even know what you call them because I don't have one. <laughs> I have old school. But I know there's like stands or whatever that you can put those fancy washer and dryers on. They're fancy to me because I don't have one. Um, so I kind of thought maybe I could get away with it being something like that. Um, we're just going to go with that story. <laughs> And then I hot glued two of those other pieces together to make my shelf. And that's going to hold the uh, fabric softener and the laundry detergent little bitty bottles. Of course, every farmhouse washing or laundry room needs a sign. So I took one of those little chalkboards you can get from Dollar Tree. I took half of the piece off, the clip off, and left half of it on, pretty much because I couldn't get it off. <laughs> and I put wash dry fold on it. And I just hot glued that to the top of the piece. And it's just coming together so stinking cute. I used a penny and drew a circle around the front of one of the boxes on top of one of the on the other box and that's going to mimic the dryer door and the top one is going to mimic the washing machine door All I had was a black Sharpie. I really wanted to use my skinny Sharpie, but it wasn't working. So right here, I'm just adding circles and a couple dots to mimic the um, knobs and the buttons on an old school washing machine. <laughs> um, just to make it look more authentic and cute. Um, a lot of these projects have that dollhouse feel to them. So I really, the washer and dryer has that dollhouse feel because it's not like overly fancy. It's just simple and cute. And actually, since this is like a vintage piece, it goes perfect with that because those are vintage washer and dryers. So I thought it needed one more thing. So I went in my stash and I grabbed a couple skewers. I'm gonna cut them down to size and then cut three smaller ones, which I'm gonna attach one to the top and I can't remember, two or three to the middle. And we're just making like a little ladder drying rack um, to hang your clothes when they come out of the ones you can't put in the dryer that need to be hung up. And so right now I'm just hot gluing these little pieces together. I do use some twine. I cut a couple of little pieces of twine. I put it around the top. Then I use that same teal fabric and I use the ribbon and I just hang a couple pieces of laundry from this little ladder towel rack.
I think this little towel rack is so stinking cute and it really is what the piece needed in that empty space because I don't know I'm my style of decorating farmhouse country is no wall has is bare and no space is empty <laughs> I just, my husband's always, when we go shopping, my husband, I'll grab something and he'll be like, real Kelly, where are you going to put that? Oh, I will find a spot, honey, for sure. <laughs> There's always a spot. So that's what I'm kind of doing here. But I think the contrast of that wooden ladder against the white, it just goes and it just finishes this off and it just makes it so cute. With just like the first one, I am going to hot glue this down. I'm going to put rope around the hole with lace and I'm going to add lace to the top of this one as well to finish this piece. These laundry room signs are so cute. See, there's my half bath. I have a little laundry sign from Hobby Lobby that's teal. My walls are beige and I really love that teal. And behind those doors is my old school washer and dryer. And these two little signs fit perfectly in between that and my window. And I think they're so cute. It, I love teal and beige together and they pop and the brightness of the white. I absolutely love these little mini signs. I hope you did too. Let me know in the comments below. Are you guys still loving minis? Are you still wanting to see more? I've had so many people suggest videos for me to do and I plan on doing everything that you guys are asking for but you also have to let me know when you're getting tired of minis and would like to see just some real size farmhouse decor <laughs> because either way i have so much fun doing these for you so i hope you guys are all having a blessed and wonderful day i love y'all and i'll see you next sunday bye y'all